exciting new goodies today from uh, Amazon. So I've been trying to debug some various power problems on a robot. And so our first thing, I've got myself a type C tester. And this should tell me uh, what current or voltage usage is going over a USB-C. So it'll help me debug a robot that's misbehaving or anything's misbehaving when plugged into USB-C. And we'll try that out in a bit. And then this beast. This, in its very nondescript plain box, is quite exciting because I've made do with various kind of USB power supplies, janky power supplies, all of this. This is something I've never owned and it's about time I did. So. One moment, please. Yeah, all right. Totally channel one of my other favorite uh, YouTubers there. Um, so this is a DC power supply. It's got a different branding from the branding I expected. Um, but this is a single uh, single output bench top power supply. And, uh, we'll get rid of that. So we've got a standard IEC mains cable, nothing too exciting there. It's fused, that's nice. Got some test leads. They're probably not up for uh, much, but we've got uh, spade connectors and we've got some crock clips. Okay, cool. And then the actual device. Okay, well, the first thing we've got is that unpronouncing <laughs> Nankadaf. <laughs> anyway, yeah, unpronounceable DC power supply. The model is the WPS3010H, and that's a 30 volt up to 10 amps, uh, and it'll do uh, 230 volts, which is good for the UK. Um, notice there's also a separately fused IEC connector here, so that's twice the fusing. Beautiful, nice and safe there. That's a metallic, feels like aluminium, but I don't know. It's very not a very cold metallic case. It's got a sticker here. What's this? Please peel off this protective film before use. Oh, okay, yeah. Standard LED protective film or screen protective film. Uh, let's take get a bit of that. So it says it's a programmable DC supply. <laughs> They're stretching the word programmable. So we've got a button to turn the output off. We've got power. Okay, so that's just a button. That's a proper mechanical on off switch. There is a dial and I can feel that detenting. That's nice, current detenting. We got the three plugs here, which um, banana type plugs, I guess. So we've got ground, positive, negative, and we can screw those so we can bind stuff to those posts. Excellent, we'll have to try this out on the bench. Have a quick look at the instruction manual. So, Okay, we've got a safety summary, product overview, product parameters, model list, oh crikey, it's quite a lot here, 13 pages, does that mean all 13 pages are the English manual? Yep, so they aren't putting in multiple languages in this. Um, got model number, C for the output voltage, adjustable, current adjustable, input voltage, operating temperature, zero, degrees to about 40 degrees celsius that is storage minus 10 to 70 so that is what 0.5 percent plus three millivolts low stability ripple noise current stability again i mean for my purposes i'm mostly using this to drive robotic devices so this is going to be fairly suitable so on this page we've got some specifics for each of the power supplies now ours is WPS and so we look at the WPS series we've got the 3010H so 3010H not 30 not to 10 amps 300 watts there are bigger 120 volts I didn't need that really so I didn't opt for it uh, we have uh, the product size which apparently is the same for all of these models package dimensions product weight I don't know the deal with how different the APS but if you look at it Product size is basically the same. So I wonder if this is to do with, because some of them have this, uh, and this was what was available. Maybe it's whether they had this tall dimension or a wider dimension. Don't know. Hmm. Comments below if you know. Ah, well, it was on the next page. So here's the WPS model and here's the APS model. It's mostly a display difference, but then what do these buttons on 22 do? 
storage buttons. Okay, so that's actually allowing you to have digital storage of settings, whereas a model I have doesn't. So it's a slightly simpler, maybe a cheaper model. That's okay, because I'm suspecting quite a lot of the time I'm going to be using either 5 volts or 3.3 volts. I'm going to rarely go above them, but I have a few places where I need 24 volts, so it's worth having the 30 volt capability. Um, nothing that exciting here, but we've got a USB host interface. I didn't spot that, no. No, we don't have a USB host interface, okay. Maybe only some models have that. We do have uh, the USB charge interface though. Um, fast charge interface indeed. Okay, so actually what's interesting is where this sticker is. Can I, I can feel the cavity for where the USB host interface might be just there. You can kind of see it, yeah. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole of the manual, but here it does talk about the APS model, um, short circuit protection. Uh, both of them have that, okay, but the APS, only applicable to, has three groups of memory functions for store and recall. Here's an interesting side section on remote operation. Can be equipped with the communication module, optional, to realise remote operation. So maybe this is just USB to RS 2032, uh, 2032, 232, what am I thinking? I'm thinking of batteries. So there's obviously some kind of optional module here and it's showing information like settings and board rates and so on. Um, system, system settings, output button to hit the system settings. Okay, so we might still be able to do this on this model. This isn't just an APS model to set these configuration. ID, power supply, screen brightness, buzzer switch might be handy because I don't want to buzz too often. And size of the serial port data. Do they actually mean board rate? Oh, no, small. Oh, big Endian and small Endian. Hmm, Endianness. Okay, why would you want to set that? Very odd. Okay, for completeness, these leads, they don't feel very nice, so I don't think that's silicone. Um, they'll do for my task, because I'm not particularly high current, but I'm pretty certain you could purchase better. Um, two spade lugs there, okay, fair enough. There, what's that? Maybe about a meter or so if I was to stretch that out, which is more than enough for my purposes. So I've not connected anything yet apart from power for it, but if I take a look at it, hopefully turning it on will show me, show you why I bought it. So if you look at that display, that display is really clear. Well, I may have to figure out turning these uh, 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 turning these display off, this display off. If I turn on the power, the output, okay. Constant voltage, the actual output in watts. Obviously, there's nothing connected, so really is nothing. Constant voltage, thirty one volts. <laughs> it's a little bit over the thirty volts. And as the top, I have to turn off that blit creaking. That's going to drive me nuts. Okay, so system settings. So turn it on. Press and hold for five seconds. One, two, three, five. Ah, there we go. Setting one. So, so turn it to change and then press it to switch to the next item. Oh, it's a button as well, is it? Two is power supply brightness. Sorry, three is screen brightness, that's power supply output status. Buzzer switch, and we turn this. Oh, it's turned off. Any other key, it'll be exited and will not be saved. So how do we save? Uh, oh, you've got to go to through the last item six. And now that's saved. Okay, and now <laughs> it doesn't beep. And you don't need it to beep because there's nice tactile feedback on this switch anyway, so I'm happy with that. Does the button allow me to change? Oh, look at that. That's what they mean by programmable. Do you see this? So you press the button to change the digit. So actually, if I want five volts, there we go. Perfect, very nice. So this little robot here, which I'm testing for another project, I've been running it off batteries and well, batteries run out. That's annoying when trying to do lots of testing. It's great when it's up and running, 
But uh, that's actually based on, what have we got? We've got eight AA batteries, and those are AA, uh, they're 1.2 volts each, so that's 9.6 volts. I reckon we can reproduce this here. So, oh, it still beeped at me. Please say that's setting. Oh, okay. Just beeps when turned on. Fair enough. So we're at 9.6 volts. So 9.6. And I know it could be a little higher or a little lower, depending on the freshness of the batteries. But that'll do. So cabling-wise, well, I've got a breadboard here. What I've done is I've gone with, um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to swap those. So I put red on red and then green on the black. Um, but I've got it so the crop clips go out to these uh, simple, well, just simple wires really. But I mean, they could be male DuPonts so I can drop them into the breadboard. And that should be enough to power the robot. And that nine volts goes through, there's a UBEC there that then powers the rest of the system. Right, now we get to the first frustration of this. So... Actually, maybe these would be better as banana plugs, just because there's no good place to put these. If I put them underneath, they're going to catch on the desk. If I put them above, they're going to obstruct these. And I put them to the side, well, I kind of can, but yeah, I think these spade lugs. And look, this uh, doesn't, it, <laughs> there's no way it reaches over to that negative terminal properly. Um, I mean, if they're over the top, maybe, but now it's it's covering the power, it's obstructing, well, not quite, but it, it's frustrating, right? It's not quite right. Let's put that in there, and, oh, quite tricky for you to see what I'm doing there. It's quite tricky for me to see what I'm doing, frankly. So, like that, I guess. Okay. At the moment, the output isn't turned on, so I haven't just powered up my circuit. But if I turn on the output... Now, there is a USB cable. It's not going anywhere right now. It's disconnected. So we turn it on. We should see, eventually, lights appear on this thing if everything is correct. So, turn it on. Three watts. That's mm, not a lot of current. Ah... So it's going to eventually power up this Wi-Fi jobby, which takes up all the power. But it's it's alive. 43 milliamps. Let's see what happens if I point something at the uh, the robot's Wi-Fi. So 71 milliamps. That's fine, isn't it? I mean, oh, and it actually stopped there. You saw the jump down to 41 milliamps as it stopped doing whatever it was doing. We can maybe power it down and reset the robot. That's really nice. Just a button here. Okay, we power it up again. Wait for the robot to wake up. And it's interesting, there's a so it's a slightly high time on just powering it up initially. 52 milliamps. And the wireless stuff is no longer responding again. Um, I'm debugging the wireless stuff, but I wanted a power supply, so I'm not trying to debug any power supply issues at the same time. And to rule it out being a power supply issue. I kind of did put in an oscilloscope to check for any power spikes or power dips. Um, so I'm fairly satisfied it's not the batteries. But having the batteries run down while playing, frustrating. So this is going to help me out loads. Okay, let's take a closer look at the uh, USB tester. 4 to 30 volts, so it can handle when it goes to uh, power delivery and so on. I love how they do this capacity range. It's a little bit crazy, those numbers, but there we go. Up to 99 hours. Okay, I don't quite know why. I bet you it'll be a bit hotter than that. So we've got temperatures. We've got a key switch. Now, notice it is directional. So that kind of means, presumably if that arrow does mean direction, that this must always be coming out of the laptop or computer or the supply, and this must be going to the device. That makes it slightly awkward when actually there's an ideal place on the device here where I'd love to know what the power input is. Yes, that's a micro to C adapter. That's because this gets a little bit spongy when changing micros. Um, so it'd be nice to be able to plug it feeding in there. But looking at it, if that arrow is what tells you direction it's going to run in, it's not going to help. Um, is there anything on the back? No, a <laughs> very, very brief manual. I guess. What's this about then? Does it say 11? 
function key. Okay. Oh, there we go. S switch interface, save the data. Flip the screen, save the data. Oh, I wonder then if you can actually save the data you get from this out to the computer. Maybe it arrives, uh, shows itself as a file. That would be amazing, right? Uh, what have we got? Product name, Model S 27, and make a Hawk. Current 0 to 5 amps. Not zero to nine 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 milliamps and powers milliamp powers. It's not a battery. Um, fine. Uh, it's got some kind of support code here. I'm plugging in here. It might not be advisable. It might be better to plug it in closer to the uh, um the laptop, which is both doing power supply and hopefully serial debugging. I have no idea if this device is going to be compatible when serial debugging is happening as well. I wonder if the button here will wake it up. Maybe I have to plug something else in. Okay, something else is plugged in, and I'm still getting nothing on this display. Um, I don't see anything on that display at all, apart from a scratch. Hopefully that's just a uh, an adhesive sheet. Hmm... It's not quite doing what I want it to do. Okay, that's looking good. Works in this port. I have a circuit Pi, so I have a pass through for the robot. That's kind of handy. I see, uh, was it, so 70 milliamps, which means it's kind of taken up the slack from the uh, the battery supply, which is now only taking 30 milliamps. Um, and so that means the two of them together are powering this. When I disconnect the USB, then it is just this would be the batteries. Oh, one more question. It did mention in the sheet here um, something about save the data, to switch interface and save the data. I don't see any drive appearing on the computer that maps to a drive on the USB device, so I'm afraid it doesn't save data in that way. So if you're having hopes of that, and I was, uh, that seems unlikely. The other screws have what appear to be maybe small black washers. This one's got a silvered washer with corrugations on it. I wonder if this is so someone could earth the case because, well, unlike the UK, they're not using an earth connection. Hmm. Comments below, please. Well, it had to happen eventually. The penny just dropped that uh, these are actually talking about display ranges. And while it is either charging or powering something, it is literally accumulating the milliamp hours or milliwatt hours that it's been using while powered up. So I guess it could be handy if you were trying to look at charging behaviour or overall power behaviour over time. Now I'm more interested in kind of instantaneous power usage, but uh, I could see how that could be useful. This over the next few weeks is going to save me, well, years, it's going to save me lots of trouble. Um, a, so I know how much is coming via USB and how much that's demanding. Uh, B, so I don't run down batteries when testing these things, which uh, I have a lot of robots I test and it's fairly frequent. So why I've not bought one of these before, I don't know. It's going to be really handy for me. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this kind of little unboxing and review and vague test. Uh, and uh, well, go make stuff and be awesome. Bye. Um, let's take it. Um,